Two of the most famous Allied generals of World War II, through no faults of their own, had miserable post-war lives that actually beggars belief. In fact, they ended up in worse financial positions than the German generals that they fought against, including even Waffen-SS generals. My recent trip to the Netherlands has brought home to me once again the role of Poland in the liberation of that nation and the high regard and affection of the Dutch people for the Polish troops that fought on the Allied side. The Polish armed forces in the West, loyal to the Polish government in exile in London, was a series of army, navy and air force units formed from brave Poles that fled to Britain from France after that nation's defeat or were evacuated from Norway in 1940 or transitioned all the way to Britain via the Middle East. They were united by two desires, to help the Allies liberate Europe from the scourge of Nazism and to see Poland free again. They were to help British, American, French and Canadian forces achieve the former, but sadly not the latter, as Poland was handed over to Stalin in 1945 and a communist puppet government hostile to Poles who had fought for the Western Allies installed in Warsaw. Polish units, equipped by the British, fought valiantly in North Africa, Italy and Northwest Europe. Two generals in particular are forever associated with the British 21st Army Group's efforts to liberate the Netherlands and strike on into Germany. Major General Stanislaw Marczek, the commander of the Polish 1st Armoured Division between 1942 and 1945, and Major General Stanislaw Sosobowski, of Bridge Too Far fame, who commanded the first Polish independent parachute brigade that took part in the doomed Operation Market Garden both men serving under Field Marshal Sir Bernard Montgomery's command in Northwest Europe. Marczek had been an army officer since 1914. He fought in the 1939 Battle of Poland, his brigade fighting valiantly and notably. His reputation as a leader of men undisputed by his superiors or his subordinates, and he helped to recreate the Polish army in France after Poland's surrender, being a brigadier general. His detailed report on German blitzkrieg methods was ignored by the French high command, and his request to create a Polish armoured unit similarly ignored until March 1940, when the French gave Marczek a few FT-17 tanks of World War I vintage. When Germany invaded France, Marczek was given all the equipment he needed, but the training time was not available. Leading only the best men, his 10th Armoured Cavalry Brigade was in the thick of the fighting, but with the French army collapsing and his vehicles without fuel, he led his men out of France to the UK, via Vichy France, North Africa and Portugal. In Britain, Marczek resurrected the Polish armoured unit, and in July 1944, the Polish 1st Armoured Division landed in Normandy, attached to the 1st Canadian Army. It won fame with victories at Mont Ormel, Hill 262 and Chambois, playing a crucial role in preventing 14 trapped German divisions from escaping from the Falaise's pocket. The first Polish armoured division spearheaded the Allied drive across northern France, Belgium and the Netherlands, famously liberating the Dutch city of Breda after a hard fight, a battle that didn't kill any of the local inhabitants. Marczek's greatest victory was his taking the surrender of the German naval base at Wilhelmshaven, capturing the entire garrison and 200 German warships. At war's end, Marczek was promoted to Major General and given command of the Polish First Corps, commanding all Polish forces in the UK until they were stood down in 1947. As well as having been honoured by Poland many times prior to 1945, Marczek received high honours from France, Belgium and the Netherlands. The British government gave him the Distinguished Service Order and he was made a Companion of the Order of the Bath. Yet this long-serving warrior, who personally knew and was respected by many of World War II's most famous leaders, was not pensioned off to a comfortable retirement as befitting his rank and military status. Instead, General Marczek ended up working for 20 years as a barman in an Edinburgh hotel, just to make ends meet. Now, of course, there is nothing wrong with working in a bar, but it's not the usual employment for retired generals who have once commanded hundreds of thousands of men in war and peace. How this sad fate came about is quite simple. The new Polish government, set up by the Soviets, stripped all Poles who have fought for the Western Allies of their citizenship, making them effectively stateless. 
everyone from major generals to privates. Unable or unwilling to return to communist Poland, many found themselves on the margins of British society due to their legal status. For reasons that have never been satisfactorily explained, General Marczek was denied a pension by the British government, resulting in impoverishment. All he could find to make a living was pulling pints in an Edinburgh hotel. However, he did receive some help from the Dutch. The people of Breda never forgot how he had liberated their city and applied to the Dutch government to give Marczek a pension. However, the Dutch government was not keen as it would cause diplomatic fallout with communist Poland and embarrass the British government as well. But when Marczek's chronically ill daughter required specialist treatment in Spain, in 1965 the Dutch people rallied round, raising money as part of a national campaign. Sadly, the Dutch government continued to deny Marczek a pension following another request in 1972 and the old general continued serving drinks. Touchingly, the hotel bar was often frequented by World War II Polish veterans, and before they ordered their drinks, they always came to attention and saluted General Marczek. It was only in 1989 that the Polish government apologised to Marczek, and in 1994 he received the nation's highest decoration, the Order of the White Eagle. General Marczek died in December 1994 at the incredible age of 102. He requested that his body be buried among the Polish dead, the Dutch city of Breda, which was done. Since 2018, a life-size bronze of the general has been on public display in Edinburgh. Marczek, however, was not alone in the shoddy and humiliating treatment he received in post-war Britain. Major General Stanislav Sosobowski, of Arnim fame, portrayed in the film A Bridge Too Far by Gene Hackman, had first entered military service when drafted for the Austro-Hungarian Army in 1913. During World War I, he became an officer and was badly wounded in action and decorated for gallantry. After Poland became independent in 1918, Sosobowski joined the Polish army and by 1939 was a colonel commanding an infantry regiment. He saw extensive action in the Battle of Poland, receiving the Votuti Militari, Poland's highest gallantry medal. Captured by the Germans, he escaped and joined the Polish resistance. Reaching France, he commanded an infantry regiment of the Polish forces in exile, and in June 1940, he led 6,000 men who were evacuated to England. Assigned to command the 4th Rifles Brigade, Sosobowski transformed this into a parachute brigade, and he made his first parachute jump at the age of 49. Sosobowski was noted as a strict but just commander, but one with a difficult relationship with his superiors. In June 1944, he was promoted to Brigadier General. The first Polish independent parachute brigade took part in Operation Market Garden, landing in two parts on the 19th and 21st of September 1944, the latter drop being a complete disaster as the Poles landed right on top of German forces, leading to heavy casualties. In fact, 40% of Sosobowski's brigade became casualties during Market Garden. Field Marshal Montgomery subsequently tried to blame Sosobowski and the Poles for Market Garden's failure. The Polish general staff, leaned on by the British, removed Sosobowski from command. Sosobowski had famously criticised the entire Market Garden plan from the beginning, and he had been proved tragically right, angering Montgomery. Sosobowski was given a desk job, made a commander of the Order of the British Empire, a CBE, and demobilised in July 1948. Thankfully, he had managed to get his wife and son out of Poland before the Communists took over. Settling in West London, Major General Sosobowski obtained work in an electrical assembly factory in Acton, working there as a manual labourer until his death in September 1967. In 1969, the Polish government allowed his remains to be repatriated to Warsaw. Again like General Marczek, Sosobowski was only properly recognised and honoured after his death. In 2006, Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands awarded Sosobowski the Bronze Lion, a high gallantry award. A bust of the general was set up in a park in Krakow, Poland in 2013.
To my certain knowledge, no British or Canadian World War II general in Northwest Europe ended up on the poverty line after the war, reduced to manual labour and living on handouts. That two famous World War II generals who did so much to liberate Europe ended up in such circumstances must remain a stain on the honour of Britain. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.